This is Pat Obi, Purdue University, Northwest. Welcome to my third and final presentation on logistic regression. In this presentation, I'm going to provide some interpretations of the coefficients of a multiple logistic regression and more importantly, show how to calculate probabilities for purposes of forecasting from the estimated regression equation. In the previous presentation, I used eViews to obtain results of a logit model in which we estimated the likelihood of loan approval given the applicant's down payment and income to loan ratio. Now, because both of these coefficients are positive, as you see here, and for good measure, statistically significant based on their p-values, they tell us that the probability of loan approval increases with higher down payments and higher income to loan ratio. Now while that might be intuitive, it will be interesting to examine how estimated probabilities change for different levels of either down payments or income to loan ratio. Now as a side note, in an earlier presentation I explained how estimated probabilities from the logit model are bounded between 0 and 1, unlike the linear probability model, which sometimes can take on probability values exceeding 1 or below 0. And also, unlike the linear probability model, in the logit model probabilities do not necessarily change by the same magnitude for all values of x. As you can see right down here, is not quite as much as right out, out here in the middle. And in my view, it offers uh, uh, this outcome offers us a more realistic picture of how our behavioral response to changes in circumstances is often not linear. Now moving forward, the task ahead of us is to transition from the estimated logistic function here to probabilities for different levels of independent variables DP and IL. Now I'm also going to show calculations for the odds ratio and change in odds ratio. Odds ratio as you see here is, is the ratio of uh, the probability of success to the probability of failure as it were and measures the probability that Y is equal to 1 relative to the probability that it's not. And as an example, uh, if y, if uh, the odds ratio is 3, then it tells us that um, you have a 3 to 1 chance of success. So the larger the odds ratio, as you would imagine, the greater the chances of success. Change in odds, though, is the ratio of two odds ratios and it's uh, calculated as the larger ratio divided by the smaller one and it's going to show us how the odds change with, with a semi-unit increase in the underlying variable in the explanatory variable. Now one interesting fact about change in odds ratio though is that if this calculates to be 1 then it's telling us that um, changing the values of the explanatory variable is not going to alter the um, probability of uh, success. So let's go ahead and go to Excel and show the analysis. So I've copied over the results from the uh, eViews output and uh, here the intercept is negative 9.373671 the coefficient for down payment is 0 0.1349 and the coefficient for income to loan ratio is 0 0.1782 now what I'm going to do here is to estimate probabilities holding income to loan ratio constant at 35 percent and then observe uh, how probabilities would change for different levels of uh, down payments as you see right here. As a quick reminder, note that the logit regression model is simply the log of odds ratio. It isn't the probability and that's what we're getting ready to calculate right now. Now, um, coming down here, let's calculate first the odds ratio, uh, the log of odds ratio for 
an applicant with income ratio, income to loan ratio of 35% and down payment of um, 5%. So that's this formula right here. So to the intercept, I'm going to add the product of this first coefficient multiplied by 5% and also add the product of this second coefficient here and, uh, well, 35%. All right, so for that, it will be equal. And actually, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the sum product command to make it quick for us. So some product command is just going to grab all of these and multiply them by the, their corresponding values to the right. So some product, I highlight all of these. And before I continue, I'm going to, I'm going to lock them up. All right, lock them, pressing the function key F4. All right, would lock them up. And then comma, and then I, I grab all of these. All right, and then close parenthesis. So that's the log of odds ratio, negative 2.4547. So, and uh, that's this first um, estimation right here with uh, the substituted values, 5% and 35% respectively. And so now, let's calculate the predicted probability, which is this right here. So, it's going to be the exponential function exp. You open parenthesis, and this term right here, remember, it is the log of odds ratio. So, why don't I click on it right there? close parenthesis and divide by open parenthesis exp open parenthesis again it's gonna be this log of odds ratio click it right there close parenthesis plus one we gotta don't forget to add this one right here then close parenthesis and we're good to go and the probability is only 0.079 so you have only about 7.9 chance of getting this loan approved that's not looking good, as I'm sure you would agree. The odds ratio here would be equal to P, which is this guy right here, divided by 1 minus P. Click on it again. Close parenthesis. So as you can see, the odds ratio is far less than 1. So this situation ain't going to produce much good, I dare say. Now, how about if you choose to kick up your down payment by 5% from 5% to 10%? So for that, I'm just going to click here and take it across. So this kind of uh, increases your log of odds from negative 2.45 to negative 1.78. But more importantly, what's the probability that corresponds to this? All right, since I've already done it here, I'm just going to copy it across. That inches up a tiny bit, not by much. In fact, the change here is this minus this, a change of only 6.5% in probability. That's not telling us um, an interesting, um, an encouraging story, you know. So, and also, if you look at the odds ratio, just gonna take this and bring it over here. You can see that the odds ratio is still far below 1, suggesting that the odds of failure are much greater than the odds of success. So this doesn't quite look good. Now though, but how about now you decide to go with a conventional uh, minimum down payment if you want to avoid um, mortgage insurance? Well personal mortgage insurance here in the United States by ensuring a down payment of no less than 20%. All right, so for that, let's copy this over. That's your log of odds. Now, but what's your probability? It goes up quite a bit to now approximately 0.4. So you have uh, your odds of getting this loan are looking kind of good. And if we look at the odds ratio, uh, we can see that um, although it still is below one, but um, it's looking uh, prettier. So now, but what if you choose to do what you did here? You know, for this applicant here, who examined what the odds would be if they kick it up by five percent from five percent to ten percent? What if we do the same from twenty percent to twenty-five percent, kicking it up, kicking it up by five percent? 
what difference might that make? So first, let's calculate the log of odds. Right there. We're now in the positive territory. And how about p hat, the predicted probability, most importantly? Now you have a more than 50% chance that this loan will be approved. And if you want to look at the change in probability, which is this minus what it was, 5% behind, that's um, a good looking 0.1667. So, as you can see, um, by um, increasing the down payment by the same 5% from 20 to 25 significantly raises the odds from about 0.4 to 0.56 and the odds ratio for good measure is um, now a respectable 1.28 almost telling you that you have um, 1.28 to 1 chance of this loan being approved. And as you can see, even though down payments went up by the same rate, 5% in each case from 5 to 10 and from 20 to 25, the change in odds, as you can see, is not the same. But this is because the logistic regression represents a, a relationship that, as I mentioned before, is not linear. It does, in my view, reflect more realism in life. Now, let's um, kick it up a, a notch more. How about if you have a down payment of 50%? What's your log of odds? Take it over there. That's it. What's the P? Oh, what's P hat? That's a healthy 0.97, almost 1. And what's your odds ratio? That's 37. Wow. 37 to 1 chance that this loan will be approved. Well, that goes without saying. But what if you want to play this game out and say, well, how will the odds change if I uh, increase down payment by 5%? So if you do so, take it over there. That's your log of odds. And then copy this over here. That's your probability value. And by how much did probability change? Click on that, minus, click on that, by little or nothing. Look at that, nothing. And what's the odds ratio? A whopping 73, as you can see there. So notice that the estimated probability for a down payment of 50% and 55% is about the same, almost one. As a result, change in odds is negligible just as in the case when down payment increased from 5 to 10 percent as you can see change in odds close to zero and also as you can see it doesn't really matter that the odds ratio for down payment of 55 is um, 73 to 1 compared to what it was at 50 37 to 1 it really doesn't matter, the reason being that the likelihood of success is virtually assured, assured. So then, therefore, by increasing down payment by 5% does not have the same effect if the initial down payment is either very low or very high as in this case, compared to what it would be somewhere in the middle. Now as the logic model plot here shows, most of the change occurs in the middle, as you can see right here. So that's about it. The only thing else that might be of interest in uh, logit regression analysis, if I'm going to go here back to PowerPoint, and, and although it's in spreadsheet, but I'm just going to show it right here, is in addition to confidence interval estimation for the coefficients, um, 
you could also choose to calculate the correctly predicted values. Now, correctly predicted values is some kind of a pseudo R square and is very useful in, ver in verifying the effectiveness of your prediction model. And so after running the logit model, as I note here, you establish this criterion. So where your predicted value, where your predicted probability value is equal to the actual y value, then you did a good job for that particular aspect, observation as well. Uh, whether it's p hat equal to 1 or value close to 1, when y is 1 or p hat close to 0 when y is 0. So this and this combined would represent when you are correct. And if you add them together, it's a percent of total predictions will give you the percent correctly pred predicted. I note here though that if uh, that you want to use a high cutoff uh, when uh, determining, for example, when p hat uh, is greater than 5 because rem greater than 0.5. Remember, greater than 0.5 means you have more than a 50% chance of uh, loan approval, as in this example. And of course, you also want to be sure, you know, when it would also, you would also be right if uh, your p hat is very low, in which case the loan would not be approved. And if in that case it, it is in fact not approved, then you are also correct. So I know right here. So in the analysis using the data for this study, I set up my own criterion and I said if p hat is more than 0.6 when y is 1, then I'm going to code that as true. Also, if p hat is less than 20% when y is 0, when the customer applicant wasn't granted a loan, I would also say, hey, I'm right there. So grabbing all those um, outcomes when I was right, as a percent of total, I find the results to be 77%. And this is the copy over of the spreadsheet analysis, the case where um, p hat is close to 1 and the case where p hat is 0 or y is 0. And this wraps up this presentation. Thanks for watching.